<sighs> Good evening or morning, whichever day you are watch whichever part of the day you are watching this. Today we're here on this very special TED Talk to talk about the one thing that has been frustrating me for the last couple of weeks. And that's the Texas Ranger bullpen. Let's get started. <laughs> And welcome back. This is my Sunday vlog. Hope you guys are having a great weekend and a happy Mother's Day as well to all the wonderful mothers out there watching. Uh, happy Mother's Day to my mother as well, who's, I don't know if she watches <laughs> these shows, but uh, uh, once once I kind of broke the news to her that I was doing, you know, streaming and whatnot, and, you know, she was, she was super excited for me. So uh, happy Mother's Day to my mother. I might, I'll probably get to see her a little bit later, to, later on today. Um, I'm excited. I'm really excited. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for today because I, I got her some good gifts. So, but, it, you know, with it being Mother's Day, though, we're, we're, we're not going to talk mostly Mother's Day. There's one thing, you know, one thing that I always uh, categorize with mothers, and especially the one in my life, the ones in my life, is that mothers are very protective. And kind of fitting that Today, we're going to be talking about the Texas Rangers bullpen because in hindsight, when you think about a baseball bullpen, they're supposed to protect, mostly in certain cases, they're either supposed to protect leads uh, that the starting pitcher, you know, protect the game that the starting pitcher started out or kind of help, you know, protect, you know, in a way. I, I, I don't know where I'm going to this, but we're talking bullpens today. <laughs> um so starting out, uh, let's, let's, let's rip, rip, rip the Band-Aid off, shall we? Um, the Texas Rangers bullpen. It is an anomaly, and for those who haven't been watching the Rangers this year, you could say, well, you know, they're, they're a 24-win team. They're one of the better teams in baseball. You know, offensively, yes, on paper, they are one of the best, better teams in baseball right now offensively. Uh, starting pitching has been up and down. Uh, obviously, Jagram being on the IR, uh, you know, we knew it was coming, but uh, nobody saw what uh, Nate Evaldi has been doing so far this year coming, and he has been nothing short of remarkable. So, you know, that was, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because originally I wanted Carlos Rodon. Uh, but the Yankees ended up taking him, and now he's <laughs> he's out for the year. So I'm I'm thankful that we got uh, that we got Nate Evaldi. Uh, thanks Scott. Who you know? Shout out to Scott Cope, who uh, not only is one of uh, the co-hosts on the baseball show on Tuesdays, but is also an avid Red Sox fan. So uh, thank you for Nate Evaldi. I, I appreciate it wholeheartedly. <laughs> um, you know, Perez, Martin Perez is back. Uh, he's in the number three slot. He's been doing pretty well. I mean, the last couple starts he's had, uh, he, he, he's gotten, they got, they got to him a little bit, you know, uh, he struggled a bit here in the, in the last, in the last few starts he's had, but, uh, you know, overall he's still kind of the same pitcher that we saw last year. So, I mean, you know, if he's able to get things figured out, continue to be, you know, the Perez that he was last year, you know, that'll work out for him. John Gray, last his last start, he went eight innings, did pitch very well. He's been kind of up and down, but, you know, it's been more up than down. Really, other than, you know, DeGrom missing time, Andrew Haney's been kind of the wild card. I mean, two and three is, you know, not the best record, but then again, there are some of those cases where it's just like, you know, he he had a lead, 
in some of those games. He he, he went deep in some of those games. And uh, the subject of our, our video today, well, the bullpen is part of the reason why he has a two and three record. So let's 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 talk about the bullpen here for a second as we as we kind of you know traverse through all of this. And uh, the one guy I want to start with who, as of right now, yes, they, he's not listed as part of the bullpen because of the injury to Jacob DeGrom. Uh, Dane Dunning, what a turnaround it has been for Dane Dunning. Like, last year, I know Ranger fans out there will agree with me, last year, you know, you couldn't get this man a win. Like, he struggled so much over the course of last season. You know, the command wasn't there. You know, the location had issues. But it just seems that over the course of, of the last season, you know, that there's anybody who has benefited more from Mike Maddox coming back to Texas. It's been Dane Dunning for sure. And, you know, for those who don't know, during during the spring training time, they actually did have, you know, Greg Maddox uh, come in and be a little bit of a consultant during spring training. So that the, the advice he, he get garnered definitely has helped these pitchers for sure. Well, some of them, I should say. But, <laughs> um, yeah, Dane Dunning, great, great job. He's been a great middle reliever. Uh, he he slid into Degrom's uh, slot there in, in the in the rotation as of right now, uh, until uh, Jacob Degrom comes back. But it seems like you know he's been such a great asset for this team so far. Um, a lot of talk about him. Maybe you know once Degrom comes back, maybe he slides down to that five role and, and kind of takes the place of Andrew Haney. I think they keep Andrew Haney there at least for a little bit, and. Uh, you know, they wait till maybe like June, July, late and late and around that time, uh, to to make a full decision on that because uh, I know around that time they're they're thinking about you know actually bringing up Jack Leiter, who's I believe either in Frisco or in the uh, 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 AAA Round Rock right now. But uh, you know, I, I like what Dane Dunning's doing. You know, maybe you slide Dunning to the five spot and put Andrew Haney as a middle reliever. Maybe that helps them a little bit. Maybe that helps the bullpen a bit, but uh, you know, yeah, he's been doing really, really well. So I'm, 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 he's one of the few guys in this bullpen that I'm, I'm very happy with. I'm very, you know, excited to have as a part of this rotation. So kind of going over some of the, some of the guys here in the bullpen, uh, the, 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 Supposed closer who was uh, listed as the closer is Jose Leclerc. He's got five saves. He's three and three on the season. ERA four two seven, WHIP one three six, fifty one strikeouts, twenty four walks. The problem is that he's had so many blown saves. Not here in the early going. That is just. You know, the Rangers have had to resort to, you know, extra inning wins or, you know, losing certain contests where you feel like, you know, they had no business <laughs> losing. And so, I mean, Leclerc, uh, a lot of people and a lot of Rangers faithful are saying that, you know, he should not be the closer. And, you know, here in the last week or so, he hasn't really been pitching, which means that, you know, Bruce Bochy kind of feels the same way that he needs to kind of work on his on his uh, mentality a little bit here because he's he's not been good. He's been probably the worst of, of our bullpen so far. Leclerc just can't get anything going. And, you know, there was high hopes for him. You know, a lot of people thought he was going to be the be the guy, be our closer this year. And it just does not pan out that way. It's so much so that Leo early on in the season there was still a little bit of concern and the Rangers ended up making a deal to bring Will Smith in, who is now kind of our dedicated closer, even though, you know, he's been up and down at times, but you know, 17 saves, it's not, hasn't been bad so far this year. Uh, going on to, to Will Smith here, you know, he's supposed to be just a, a normal relief guy. You know, he's, 
He's got 48 innings, three and three, 17 saves, as I mentioned. Again, 4.4 ERA. It's not not good for a closer. Uh, 1.27 whip, 55 to 19. It is a that is a pretty decent uh, uh, strikeout to walk ratio. Again, the ERA could be a little bit better. Again, you know, the bullpen. You know, mostly it's it's mostly the late the late relievers that have some issues. You know, Jonathan Hernandez is a guy I'm very very high on. Uh, as we kind of look at him here, Jonathan Hernandez. You know, three and three, only two saves, four oh five. Uh, ERA 1.41 whip 49.24 strikeout walk ratio. Uh, not not good, not good. A uh, couple guys on here that, uh, you know, Brett Martin, you know, is injured. He's he's like he's not going to be available this year. Um, Taylor Hearn's been kind of up and down. Uh, he's only, you know, they haven't been using much of him at all. Most of the guys that they've been using, they've been using Cole Reagans a lot. He's three and four again, 4.35, not, not good. Uh, they've been using Brock Burke, who's ERA wise. He's the best pitcher on here at three, seven, eight. Uh, obviously, John King just got called up, so we can't really rule at him right now. Um, but yeah, so Sorbs, you know, it's 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 how do I positively talk about this team? Or at least the bullpen. It's just this is crazy. So my my main concern for this bullpen is this: that they've been pretty decent. It hasn't been bad. You know, overall statistically, they're they're about middle of the pack as far as bullpens go. Um, you know, again, I mentioned some of the guys that have been great in relief. You know, Dane Dunning has been great so much so that he's slid it into you know Degrom's role and has been you know a good starter here the last couple of starts. Um, I like Jonathan Hernandez a lot. He's still kind of a raw raw talent and. Uh, He's still got a ways to go, but I think, you know, if he figures it out, he could be a really, really solid asset to this bullpen, especially in late relief. I think eventually he could end up being our closer for the future. So that would be something to kind of keep an eye on. Will Smith, great veteran. He's been doing well so far on average. Um, There are times this year, I mean, he does, he has given up a couple a couple games this year, but for the most part, anytime you throw Will Smith out there in the ninth inning, he's he does well. So, you know, some of the guys that I have issues with, Jose LeCurk is probably the biggest one. You know, he's had so many blown saves so far this year. It's mm-hmm. like it's it's unfathomable. At points, and you know, not just you know Ranger fans, but most of baseball fans in general who watch this team, they're like you know, they, they were thinking, yo, Leclerc was going to be that guy. He was going to be our closer this year, but you know, that's not the case. He struggled. He he's has trouble with command sometimes. He allows a lot of hits, a lot of runs, you know, a lot of walks, and that's something you do not want from your closer. And thank God for Will Smith and thank God for Bruce Bochy because <sighs> Lord knows what our record would be if we, if this, you know, if the bullpen problem started at the beginning of the year. And there, and there are some bullpen guys that I like, like I said, I, I'm, I'm not the biggest Will Smith fan, but I think he's played well enough to, you know, 
to earn that that permanent start, uh, closer job. Uh, I like Jonathan Hernandez a lot. I think he, again, he's a very raw talent, so he needs to develop a little bit more before he's ready to become the full-time closer. Uh, Cole Reagans, who's been used a lot in middle relief, he, he struggles at times. He gives up a lot of runs. You know, he's still a young kid, so he's he's still kind of a raw talent as well. Uh, again, I love Dane Dunning and what he's done. Um, they just called up John King. John King had a had a pretty decent uh, debut last night uh, against Oakland. So it, it'll be interesting to see what they can do to kind of you know, fix this bullpen a little bit. Again, a lot of people are concerned because, you know, this bullpen has not been its best, you know, lately, especially in games where, you know, you feel like, you know, you have the game won uh, and, and things and things just don't turn out the way, the way they hope. You know, the Angels series is a good example. That first game, the other Rangers, I believe it was like a four run lead, and then the bullpen just kind of shattered, and then the Angels came back and won that game. Uh, last couple, couple nights ago, the A's, you know, 5 5 going into extras, they end up winning in the 10th, 9 to 7. So, again, another blow, blow from the bullpen. So, but then there's also been times, you know, you could say, you know, out and I'll go back to, to, to Thursday night's game as an example. There are times where, you know, there's bad umpire calls and there's always going to be terrible umpire calls uh, in, in games. We just That's just inevitable at this point. But uh, you got to overcome that. And uh, so far, they haven't done that. But the offense has bailed them out in multiple times. Uh, starting pitching has been pretty solid here to start the year. Uh, do want to give a quick shout out to Mitch from Hardcore Sports. Hope you're doing well today. Um, it's been one of those cases where it's just like, you know, I, I am a little concerned about it. I mean, with the way the Ranger offense is, you know, it, it makes me less concerned. But when the nitty gritty gets going and you in your bullpen is not playing well, you know, go, this is a baseball, this is a baseball vlog, Scott, not basketball. But then again, yeah. Game seven, go Celtics. I'll, I'll say go Celtics. Cause I'm, I'm, I'll pick, I'll pick Boston. So that way they can lose to Miami. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, you can catch Scott Cobe with me, Jonathan Grishman, and I believe Dan Carupia is going to be back this week on our baseball show Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern uh, on Let's Talk Sports and Hardcore Sports as well. Shout out to Mitch again for allowing us to be on, on this platform. So, um, But yeah, I'm, as far as the bullpen goes, yes, I'm a little concerned especially with guys like Reagan still on there. You know, if LeClerc is LeClerc, <laughs> Red Sox are just, yeah, Kenley Jansen is, is not pitching well right now. I will say, you know, and I'm sure Scott can maybe agree with me on this. You know, Dane Dunning's been the best part of that bullpen, uh, but now he's in a starting role. So really it's Will Smith who, Yes, Will Smith has given up a couple games, but he hasn't been as bad as, say, Jose LeClerc and uh, a couple other names I don't want to mention. But it's like I said about Jonathan Hernandez. Hernandez is young. He's raw. He still has a lot to learn. And I feel once he gets all the, the pieces put together, he could be our, our, our bona fide closer for the future. Yeah, DeGrom, I believe, is going to be out for a couple more weeks, is what I, I heard. So you're, you're still going to be dealing with Dane Dunning as part of that rotation. Uh, you're definitely not calling anybody out. They did uh, bring up John King from AAA to help with the bullpen. So, um, yes, I, I want him to be back soon. We're supposed to be getting Corey Seager back probably sometime in the next week or so as well. So, uh, again... 
when you have, I, I saw this stat yesterday, last night, uh, there are 13 players in baseball right now that have 20 plus RBIs and 20 plus runs. And five of them are Texas Rangers and none of them are Corey Seager. So once Seager comes back to this lineup, you know, it's going to be an even more electric offense. So, and again, you, you gotta, you gotta figure things out and you, you know, you don't want to over exaggerate a little bit too much because if you, if you hit the panic button now, you know, it, it could wind up ending up in a mistake. And especially when you have the Astros nipping at your heels, you know, and the, and the angels are still there, you know, who knows what the Mariners are going to be, but you know, you got, you got to be patient. You got to be cautious. You know, this is still a building bullpen. Um, I do have my issues with it as, as they are well documented here, not, not just in this video, but in other shows as well. Um, but I think for the long term, it will get better. They definitely, they're definitely going to have a tough challenge this week since they, they play Atlanta, but uh, I think they end up taking, uh, going three, one, you know, against Oakland today. Uh, and then Monday, I think out. I'll, I'll say that not not to sound sound terrible or anything, but thank God Max Fried is not pitching on Monday because that would have been rough. <laughs> so it'll be it'll be uh, Atlanta and Texas on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. That series to me will tell me exactly where Texas stands right now. If they're able to take a game, maybe two from Atlanta, I, I, I I'll be happy with one game because Atlanta, I feel, is the best team in baseball. So it, it, if they take one game, I'll be happy. If they take two games, I'll be ecstatic. So that, that that's just how I feel about this here. So it's going to be a tough series, especially this week, and we'll, we'll definitely have a lot to talk about it. I'm, I know... With Dan Pop possibly coming back on Tuesday, we're gonna, you know, definitely grill him about how bad the Mets have been the last couple of weeks. But the, the the main focus was probably gonna be that Texas Atlanta series. So and and the back and forth we're gonna have on there, uh, and then, you know maybe we'll talk Red Sox if, if Scott's okay with it. I'm sure I don't know if he's gonna want to talk Red Sox on Tuesday or not. So, uh, but. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's kind of how I feel. I mean, yes, there's concerns. I think with the right guys in place, and I think they will make a move to, to bring in another bullpen piece to kind of help solidify it, you know, for the long haul. But I think for right now, I, I'm comfortable with Will Smith as the closer because I, I feel like he can at least uh, – Better, better than, you know, certain guys like, you know, Hernandez, like I said, he's a raw, raw kid right now. Um, LeClerc, I don't trust at all. Um, so Will Smith is definitely kind of, you know, even though he's the veteran old guy on the team, he's still the best option. Uh, unless you want to throw Dane Dunning as the closer, but in which case, eh. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of how I feel. And, uh, Uh, I never know how to end these vlogs. It's crazy. <laughs> but uh, as far as the rest of the week is concerned, uh, I am going to be on a uh, another Dallas Cowboys show later today. Um, that'll be at 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Dan has not told me the specifics on it, but uh, uh, I will be a guest on a, on a on another show later today. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, tomorrow morning, we have the Monday morning duo with myself and Sean Jarrett. Uh, we're going to talk about the NFL schedule, NBA playoffs, this, that, and everything else. Tuesday is our baseball show with Scott, myself, you know, Dan Carubia, and uh, Jonathan Grishman. We'll talk about Mets, Braves, Rangers, Red Sox, the entirety of Major League Baseball. Uh, Wednesday morning is uh, the newsletter with myself and Scott. Wednesday afternoon is the roundtable with me and Ashton Booker. 
and then whatever else I have going on the rest of the week. So it'll be interesting. There is something that I have in the works that I've been talking with Dan about. <laughs> so who said it'd be a playoffs? Go, go Celtics. He, the obligatory go Celtics. Yeah. Hopefully they get good guard play tonight. <laughs> uh, man. Speaking, uh, there is something I have in the works. I'm, I'm in talks with it with Dan right now. Um, but it's not going to be until football season. So it, it'll, it'll be kept secret until then. So expect something coming once, once football season comes rolling around. So, uh, yeah, that's how I'm going to end it today. So thank you guys so much for watching again. Go Celtics. Cause I'm cheering for the Celtics today, even though this is a baseball vlog. Um, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit the outro. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Sunday. I'll be back on Let's Talk Sports here in about, you know, three and a half hours, I want to say, if my math is correct. I don't like doing math this early in the morning. Uh, yeah, I think so. But, yeah, I'll be back later today. Uh, and then, of course, tomorrow morning with the Monday morning duo. But until then, guys, love you all. Stay safe. Happy Mother's Day. And take care.